right, you guys. So I'm getting ready to take the babies on the back porch in their play yard. But I want to show you how cute they are because every time that I'm going to take them outside of their normal routine, like they get to come out of their room at least twice a day for several hours. But there are times where we do things that are outside of even that. So whenever I go to do that with them, they know and it's so funny. So I want to show you guys what happens when I take them anywhere outside of their normal routine, like downstairs in the backyard, on the back porch, just anywhere outside of wherever they normally get to go. So this is adorable and I wanna share it with you. Here we go. You guys ready, go, let's go. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss the most common mistakes that new ferret owners make. So we've all been there at one time or another, you had to get your new ferret, and so we've all made some kind of mistakes here or there. Some mistakes may be worse than others, and some may, you just may not know, are mistakes. So I've had those, I'm sure that other people have had those as well. So I'm gonna give you guys the rundown of common mistakes that I've heard from other ferret owners that they have made or mistakes that I myself have made. So um, these are not in any particular order necessarily and um, I'll let you know if there are any that I've done so that I can just tell you because I think it's important. Um, so the first is not doing research before buying a ferret. I cannot stress enough that it's like purchasing any other animal. Um, you know, you, if you're gonna get a certain breed of dog, you research it. Um, you're gonna get a certain kind of bird, you research it. And the same would apply for ferrets. Sometimes I think that people think they have a general idea of what ferrets need, but in reality, they don't have any idea. And what I mean by that is, I don't think that people always realize the amount of time that needs to go into a ferret and just how, like, how high maintenance they truly are. Ferrets are not, um, stick them in a cage and wave to them every now and then kind of animals. They really are high maintenance. I love my ferrets, but they require so much of my time and attention. And so anything that I do is always planned out around the ferrets. And what I mean by anything I do is more like how long I'm away from my home, if I go on vacation, uh, how many hours a day they're gonna be able to be free. Like now they have their own room, but like I said, I don't just leave them in their own room because I feel like they need more than that. They need to interact with me. And so anything that I do, they're taken into consideration, which is no different than my dogs or my cats with the exception that I can leave my dogs and my cats room around my entire house all day and they're okay. Also research is really good when it comes to food. I don't think that people always realize the types of food that ferrets shouldn't have. It's not so much what they should have, it's more about what they shouldn't have. And is the food that you're being told to feed them appropriate? Um, if you get your ferret from a pet store, the pet store is absolutely going to sell you the brand of food, probably by the person, the people that made your, that bred your ferret, which is more than likely gonna be Marshalls. And um, most people know that Marshalls is terrible. I, you know, obviously I would recommend that you adopt or that you try to adopt or that you try to get from a breeder before you buy from a pet store. I could preach this all day long and at the end of the day, some people are just gonna go to the pet store and get a pet. So if you're gonna go to the pet store and get your ferret, I'm not gonna be the one to stop you. Marshalls is not great. There's a ton of information out there that explains why that they don't really take care of their, their ferrets well at all. They basically mass produce them. They, they're, um, oftentimes they are, not healthy, they're separated too young from their mother. I could go on and on and on. But at the end of the day, if you are gonna take that route, that is your decision, but I will recommend this, that you please do some research about the food that you're gonna feed your ferret once you get that ferret home. Marshall's food is the worst thing that you could ever give them, along with their treats. Please don't give, hold on. Please don't use Marshall's treats or their food for your ferret. That stuff is detrimental. It shouldn't even be allowed to be sold for ferrets. It absolutely goes against everything that a ferret should have in their diet. Marshall's Farms is terrible. So um, yeah, do a lot of research before you get your ferret. Just know how much time they're gonna require, what kind of food they need to eat, what kind of um, litter, all of those things, stuff that you should know. Research is key. So that's number one. 
Um, and then number two is going to be cage. Please, please get an appropriate size cage for your ferret. Again, if you're getting your pet from a pet store, or even if you're not, when you go into a pet store, most pet stores do not sell cages that are appropriate sized for ferrets. If you can get it in the store, nine times out of 10, it's going to be an inappropriate size. Most of the pet cages that are okay or large enough for ferrets mainly come online and I'm not really sure why that is for example I use um, I have a critter nation but they actually make a ferret nation which is designed specifically for ferrets there is a difference in the critter and the ferret nation it is the way the direction of the bars it's also the spacing of the bars at the end of the day you could get away with putting your ferret in a critter nation but if you're going to spend the 259 dollars you may as well go ahead and get the ferret nation the prices are the same um, but I just happened to get a Critter Nation because I could get it to myself faster at the time. And it doesn't hurt my ferrets one way or another. They can't fit through the bars. They don't climb the cage, thank goodness. So it all worked out for me. But um, even with them being in a Critter Nation, that's two stories. You know, it's enough room for their litter box. It's enough room for them to sleep. But it certainly isn't enough room for them to be in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So... Of the cages that are recommended for ferrets, I will just tell you that Critter Nation is probably the best cage. It's probably the most recommended by ferret owners, uh, aside from free roaming, ferret, or either free roaming your ferret all together around your house or having them in a ferret room or having them in a space that is allocated just for your ferrets in your home that may be like a one giant cage um, with those clear plastic like kind of like um, similar to guinea pig cages except without the bars they could climb. So there's lots and lots of ways that, that you can home your ferrets, but if you are gonna be a person that uses a cage, you're definitely gonna get, wanna get one that's large enough. Um, those tiny plastic cages that are one story, even the plastic cages in general, I highly, highly recommend against those plastic cages. And the reason for that is your ferrets can get out of those. Nine times out of 10, they will figure out how to unlock the door. There's not enough room for their litter boxes. There's it, they're rickety, they're not stable, they're just, the, the bars are weak, the ferrets can chew the bars, a lot of times they can bend the bars. Now those plastic cages are absolutely not suitable for ferret to, ferrets, despite what the picture says on the box, or despite what the person at your local chain pet store or pet store is just going to tell you. I'm not an expert, I just speak from experience. I'm not, um, anything that I tell you, I only tell you because I've either done it or because I have experienced it or seen the repercussions of people doing the same thing. When I first got Weasel, I did have one of those tiny plastic cages, but about two days after I got Weasel, I got his sister. And so I immediately switched to a Critter Nation. Um, sorry, I keep watching my, I'm outside on the porch and the ferrets are outside in their play yard and they're just playing. And I want to make sure that they don't push the play yard up because um, they're sneaky and they're feisty and they have, in the kitchen, um, Ruby can get out of this play yard. She seems to not be able to do it here, but she has in the past and she is trying right now. So, so cage size is super important. That's number two. And see, now that I've taken her out, Weasel saw me, now he wants to come out. They're so funny. So, um, number three, I'm gonna say, this is just a personal pet peeve and I'm gonna say it's collars. Please don't put a collar on your ferret. Please don't put a collar on your ferret and then have your ferret be in a collar when you're not around. If you're gonna take your ferret for a walk, use an eight point harness, use an H harness. Please don't use a collar and please don't leave your ferret in a collar when you're not home, especially if they free roam. My biggest fear is that if I have a collar on my ferret and they get stuck on something, they could hang themselves. And then I come home to a, a ferret who has hung themselves accidentally because their collar got stuck on something. It's just so dangerous. Your ferrets don't need a collar. I know that people put collars on their ferrets with little bells so that when they're running around the house, you can find them. And I understand that. I understand the reason for that. It just makes me nervous. And as a personal, in my personal opinion, I don't recommend collars. So collars is number three. Okay, so the ferrets went back inside. They are tired, they are good in exercise, they have eaten, they're happy, and I'm gonna finish the video out here because it's really nice out. So, on to number four. Okay, so mistake number four is not correcting your ferrets behavior when they are young or even if they're older. So if you get a new baby ferret and that ferret is really nippy, which is not uncommon, it is absolutely 100% normal, but if that's the case and you don't teach that ferret to not be like that, you will end up with a ferret that is older who bites and that is no good. So there's, you know, there's lots of videos that you can watch on how to teach your ferrets not to bite. 
Um, there's all kinds of things that you can teach your ferrets to do that are appropriate. Um, and so it's really important that you nip those kinds of behaviors in the butt while they're young, because if not, you end up with an adult ferret who bites a whole lot harder, who isn't pleasant to be around, and then ultimately ends up stuck in a cage or you end up getting rid of them because you can't handle them. It's really important not to let your baby ferret or any ferret really bite down on you or be do things like that that are not good because you want them to be able to be social and you want them to be around people. So if you're not able to curve that while they're little, you will pay a price and ultimately that ferret pays a price at the end. So number four is making sure that you teach your ferret what's okay and what's not okay while you when you first get them. So that's number four. Number five is over bathing your ferret. People think that they're supposed to give their ferret a bath once a month. Please, 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 please don't do that. It's terrible for their skin. Um, they have natural oil, oils on their skin, which they need. They need them to be there. Um, if your ferret smells musty, try changing their bedding out. Try, um, you know, cleaning up their litter box. But at the end of the day, bathing your ferret every month, every week, every time you whatever is really bad not only for them but it's not going to make the smell better it's going to make the smell worse um they try to then overproduce that those you know their body just reacts poorly at the end of the day you end up making it worse um and so over bathing is definitely a mistake that i feel like new ferret owners make mainly because they just don't know any better and also using shampoo that's not good for ferrets please use a shampoo that's uh, made specifically for ferrets there are some shampoos that are better than others. I will put some links in the description to the shampoos that are better than the ones that you can get like maybe at big box chain pet stores. Um, so I'll put some links in the descriptions. I don't have that stuff sitting out with me. I have used the um, pet shampoo from like Petco for ferrets. So I have made that mistake as well. Um, I never have over bathed my ferret. I knew better than to do that. I give my ferrets a bath maybe three times a year, maybe. Um, the truth of the matter is it's just not good and they don't need it. Uh, and then also it's highly recommended that you give oatmeal baths um, as opposed to just using shampoo too because it's better for their skin. So I um, actually, ironically, I just learned about that. So I've had my ferrets for three years. I think I had heard about it. But um, when I started my YouTube channel, I actually have gotten much more involved in the ferret community here on YouTube. And there's some really great people who own ferrets who are very knowledgeable, even people that don't have channels and um i've gone back you know i've had lots of conversations with people and so i've also there's videos on the oatmeal bath so i'm really excited to try that my ferrets just don't need a bath right now so i haven't had a chance to do it um but the next time that they get their bath we will be doing oatmeal so i'm super excited about that because i've never done it but i do it for my dog so it makes complete sense that i could do it for my ferret um ferrets i guess so that is number five please don't over bathe your little buddy they will not like it and it's bad for them. Okay. So number six is not ferret proofing your home or not ferret proofing before you let your ferrets start running around. It's super important that you ferret proof. You have to kind of think like a ferret. Um, just know that your ferrets are gonna go into anything that you don't want them to, any kind of holes. They're gonna try to climb things. They're gonna wanna try to eat anything rubbery. And by rubbery or plasticky, I don't mean they're gonna eat a container. I mean, they're gonna go after your earbuds, your remote controls, your PlayStation controllers, that kind of stuff. That's the stuff they like, that chewy, plasticky stuff. Also, it's important that your toys for your ferrets, this kind of goes along with ferret proofing in my mind, is that if you're gonna buy your baby ferret or your adult ferret toys, please make sure that you buy them toys that are appropriate, that they cannot, they don't have little um, bead eyes. Your ferrets will eat those sometimes. Not all, now I know that this doesn't apply to all ferrets, but it does apply to a majority of ferrets. So many ferrets every year ends up with blockages, which can either result in surgery or death. Ferret proofing is one of those things that you will find yourself doing throughout the entirety of ferret ownership. All right, so number seven, is litter boxes. It's really important that you get a litter box that is um, made for ferrets, specifically for ferrets. Now, there will be litter boxes that are kind of circular and they fit into corners. Um, some ferrets may use them when they're babies, but I found that for my ferrets, they don't give them a whole lot of room. And I'm gonna put a picture right here of what I'm talking about. This is a ferret litter box that I still have and I leave it out and they use it on occasion, but at the end of the day, it is not their primary litter box and they really don't like it. Um, it's not big enough. So they make these square litter boxes that are specifically made for ferrets. They have high backs. If you don't get a high back litter box, ferrets back up when they go to the bathroom, they lift their tails and, that's, and they go to the bathroom. 
basically if your litter box is not high enough off uh, does not have a high enough back they will poop right out the litter box so it's important that you get ferret litter boxes that are made for ferrets um, and I don't think that people always really realize that especially when you're using cages that don't have a lot of room people try to put a litter box that will fit and so they get the smaller ones but your ferrets you'll find won't use that um, and or if they do use it they miss it's just not big enough so getting the appropriate size litter box is really important too and I have a litter box training video which um, I will put a link to uh, above me um, so there's lots of tips and tricks that you can do when you're first litter box training your ferret. That's really important too. You definitely want to teach your ferret to use the litter box. Um, you will also be happy about that at the end of the day as well. Uh, ferrets can absolutely be litter box trained. Don't keep your expectations low and your acceptance high. Um, they will make mistakes. They will never be perfect about it. So just know that they will more than likely than not, you're not going to get a ferret that's perfect at litter box at using the litter box, but it, you can absolutely make it so that they use the litter box more often than not. And that will make your life easier and it will make their living space more pleasurable for them and for anyone who comes in contact with that area. So that is number seven. Okay. Number eight, is having a vet that sees ferrets. Please make sure that there's a vet in your area or that you have a vet that sees ferrets and not just sees them once in a while, but sees them on a regular basis. It's really important that you have a vet that is more than just semi-knowledgeable about exotic, exotic animals, particularly ferrets, because that's what we're talking about. Um, I'll give you an example of what I mean. I lived in Maryland uh, for a while and I had a really, actually most of my life, and I had a really great vet for my ferrets. I absolutely love this woman. Um, there's actually two vets that we saw because they work in the same location and they knew all kinds of stuff really very very knowledgeable um, on how to give shots what kind of shots they could have at the same time like all of the things that you want your vet to know when it comes to ferrets i moved to a different state and i love the vet that we have now however um she obviously does not see ferrets very often and i can tell that just because when i took them for their annual vet check um, she wanted to give them all their shots at once. She didn't want us to wait and make sure that there wasn't any reactions. And to me, that was a huge red flag because I know better. I know that that's not how that's supposed to happen. So luckily I had a great vet for the last couple of years prior to moving. And so I was able to make sure that my ferrets were okay. I didn't allow any immunizations to be given that shouldn't have been at that time. And so everything was fine. When Weasel just had his emergency, I actually drove him into Maryland to see our old vet because I just trust her more. Um, actually, it was the guy, but either way, I trust them more in general. And so it's really important that you have a vet that's knowledgeable, that you trust, that you know, sees ferrets on a regular basis and um, can take care of them the way that they're supposed to be taken care of. That is number eight. And number nine kind of rolls into this. It's a similar, it kind of rolls together with number eight. Number nine is having making sure that you know that at any given time your ferret could get sick or need an emergency vet visit and that you have some kind of money set aside if at all possible and I would love to tell you that I have extra money laying around so that anytime my ferret gets sick I could just whip out that extra money and run to the vet that's that's not the case but I will tell you this I am in a position that if my ferrets are sick I can thankfully be able to take care of them Weasel went to the vet two or three weeks ago um, and that cost me $650 because I thought he had a blockage. He didn't have a blockage, but to find out that he didn't have a blockage and to make sure he was okay cost me $650 for an x-ray, for the exam, for medication, and it was it's very expensive. When Weasel broke his leg, that cost me $1,000 just for the surgery. Because it's an exotic pet, they cost substantially more when it comes to um, vet care because they can vets can charge more because they're exotic animals it's like a specialty animal if that's what I don't know how else to explain it so be knowing that your ferrets can cost extra money and being able to provide care for them if they need it is really 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 important and so while ferrets are really cute and they're cuddly and they're lovey they can be super expensive and it, and it's scary when something happens and you aren't able to care for that vet that pet so just know or just if you're able to kind of put money aside whenever you can just in case you need it if you never need it that is a wonderful and I really hope that that's the case um, but just please be prepared and please know that 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 it can happen and that it happens fast and that it is expensive so that is number nine you guys hear the frog so I we put that we put this pond in for my goldfish a couple of weeks ago like I don't know a couple months ago and I have like four frogs that live in the pond now and they just had baby frogs. Look at these baby frogs. 
they not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Okay, off topic, but they're riveting behind me. Okay, so number 10 is um, letting your ferrets get too hot. Ferrets can overheat super, super easy. It's one of the, it's a very common problem that happens in ferrets. So just don't keep your ferrets cage next to any kind of heating vents or any kind of windows or any indirect sunlight. It's really important that your ferrets are kept at a minimal temperature. Uh, ferrets can sleep and I believe it's like up like 60 degrees, maybe a little lower. I'm not recommending you keep it that cold. But what I'm saying is you don't want your ferrets in a situation where it's 80, 90 degrees. It's too hot for them. You can cause them to overheat. It can cause them to have heat stroke. Um, so please, when you're gonna make sure that you get a cage or you have them in a place that's very well ventilated, that's not overly hot. So, and number 11 is my last one, and I feel like I should have done this first, but I already numbered all of them, so we're gonna do this one last. But honestly, I think this should have been the very first one. And that is, if there's one that was more important than others, this is the one. Please don't impulse buy a ferret. Ferrets are cute, they're adorable. You go into the pet store, you see them, you hold them, you watch videos, like you want one. And I understand that 100%. Ferrets, any animal for that matter, particularly ferrets that require so much time, so much attention, so much money, just to get off the ground with a ferret is expensive. Um, so please don't go into the pet store and just impulse buy them. I know they're cute. I know that you probably want one, but if you're watching this video, you're probably doing research first, which is super awesome. It's really, really important that you wait until you can give them the things that they need to have to be, to live happy and healthy lives. So that's really all I have. There's probably a ton more. Um, I have definitely made mistakes as a ferret owner. I feel like we all have, and anybody who says that they hasn't, haven't is probably lying to you. Um, Mistakes are a natural part of life. That's how you learn. The goal is if you make the mistake that you learn from it and then you just do it differently next time. So you live and you learn and you move on and that's what's important. So I hope you guys enjoy your ferrets. I hope your ferrets are sweet and loving and that you have a great time with them. And if you like this video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.